Hello everyone, Masters now 101 here, and in this update log we'll be talking about HardOps 987.9 and some of the changes that come to it besides Blender 3.0 compatibility. One of the main additions to note is the addition of map scroll that's been added to Alt-M. However, in order to use it, you'll have to specify a path to texture maps. In order to provide some texture maps for this particular update, I've done a collaboration with Travis Davids who has a promotion under the Q menu in Link Ops where you can basically use an operative link to receive 150 tolerable roughness maps at a discount, which will assist with using this particular feature. So with that in mind, if we press Control K, we can go under the Hard Ops properties and under the pass area, let's just paste in the link to our pass. And with that, we now are able to use map scroll and once activated, they'll basically convert your material over to the system. And once you begin rolling your will, you'll be able to begin scrolling through various types of maps that are present. One of my favorite things about this is being able to press E in order to choose a random one out of all the maps that are present, which can give some really interesting results. A lot of the time, I just like to look at random roughness maps. In fact, holding control shift will allow you to begin scrubbing through the normal channel as well, choosing to increase or decrease its intensity, and you're even able to take it in reverse. So just like that, I've quickly materialized this object with a little bit of grunge just in the 3D view without having to do a whole lot of work, and that's really the focal point of this update. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into HardOps 987.9. So hypothetically, if I were materializing this, I would uh, enable visibility, I would hide the glass part, I would select everything and just assign a blank material. And then I would just select one piece. And if I shift click material scroll, I can actually scroll through combinations of various materials. In fact, I'll press O in order to change it over to look dev. And as I'm scrolling through, I can just choose the various types of blank materials until I find one that I like as what I need. And then I could select individual elements and give them blank materials as well. In fact, I'll Alt-H unhide just to uh, reveal everything. However, if we press Alt-M with something selected, we see that there's a new option here called Map Scroll. And it specifies that basically if there's no path specified in the press for it to be used, that it won't be able to be used. So if we press Control k we can actually bring up our preference. And under the Properties tab of Hard Ops under Properties, if we expand this, we see that we have a Maps area where we can specify the map that we would like to use with this particular aspect of hard op. So we'll just paste in a directory that I have pointing to some noise maps that were made by Travis Davids. And if we go back to our alt menu, we see that map scroll is now an option. So if I click it, we see that the material is transferred over to the map scroll system. In fact, if we right click and cancel, we see that the material actually looks a little different whenever you first jump into map scroll. And that is because if we expand the dot UI, we can see that we're actually blending between two different values, the original value and the value that is to be added in. So let's just right click cancel and let's reapproach it again. So basically if you jump into map scroll, in this mode without a UI showing, just rolling the wheel will allow you to scroll through the different types of noise textures that you have populating in your directory and it'll load them one by one and there's a filtration system to ensure that you're not loading say thumbnails of how it in is intended to be presented and you can just continually scroll through them. And one of my favorite things about this is you can press E and E will actually let you choose a random noise file. So I'm just choosing one of these random noise textures and by holding control shift I can begin adding bump to this. The moment you use control shift you are then adding bump. So we'll just put a subtle bump and then from there press E to jump to the next map until we find the result that we want. In the event that we want to scale this we can of course press S and move the mouse to adjust our scale pressing S to end that particular operation. We could even press G in order to translate, which can get a little bit wacky because it's dealing with box mapping and nodes. But in addition to that, you could also use things like Shift and Alt in order to adjust the brightness. So here I'm holding Alt in order to adjust the contrast of the map that's being blended into the roughness of the blank material. As of right now, the system only supports the principal shader based blank material, so it doesn't support emission, glass, or car paint just yet. But Let's just right click and set this up again. So I'm going to just select just one random element because they all share the same material. And if we shift click material scroll, we can just scroll through replacing the nodes that are inside with the ones that we're generating. And they're just basically random iterations of the material. So there's nothing to um, really think about there. So now that we have something that we like, we can then jump into map scroll and just begin rolling the wheel 
to begin mixing in different types of maps. And there's a lot more to it than just this. I'm really only skimming the surface. Uh, more than likely, I'll be coming back to do a dedicated video talking about this more in depth. But if we were to press tab, we can see that we can toggle which channels that we're interacting with whenever it comes to the texture that's chosen. We can use this little folder loader to choose which texture that we're loading. And even this one to go back to our various directories and even click home to go back to the original directory that's specified in our preferences. Um, when it comes to dealing with the roughness, you can choose how much of the roughness you have as your initial value that's being blended into the noise that's being provided, or you can actually choose what that initial roughness value is. You can also change the blend mode in the event that you're one of those type of people and want to deal with your blend mode. But before all of that, you can deal with the contrast and brightness that's being given to this. Uh, once I click, I'll show an example of what the node graph looks like. It's fairly simple. But one of the interesting things is if we hover over this, we see a tooltip saying that shift clicking will show us the channel. So at this point, we're able to now view the channel and we can just scroll in what we're wanting because there's a viewer node connected and more meticulously deal with this on an intimate level. And then, of course, shift clicking it will allow us to go back and we can continue to modify our values even while looking at the material result. And then, of course, just clicking will allow us to keep it. So let's just take a moment and jump over to shading. And with shading up we can now see the node setup that's created. So because we only operated on roughness, we just have our image connected to a UV coming out to a mapping that's then getting box blended, color ramp, uh, brightness contrasted, and plugged into roughness that's dialing between the initial value and the value that we are presenting to it through this combination. So it's really basic. But the goal is for us to be able to deal with this sort of stuff without having to go into the node editor. Nothing against the node editor, but changing my viewports is always something that I find a little bit jarring, especially because my goal is to work 100% in full screen mode without even having to use the properties panel on the side. So here I am going back into map scroll to just scroll through these values to find the perfect map. Another thing I want to mention about map scroll is that if you press Q, you can go under settings and there's an option for link ops where you can actually go to the second link, which is 150 tolerable roughness maps, which is an operative link exclusive to this update that is part of a promotion that I'm doing in collaboration with Travis Davids, who is an illustrious 3D artist from South Africa, who just happened to have made a very nice set of roughness maps that cater to our needs. Currently, map scroll is exclusive to the behavior of roughness, but in the future, we'll be expanding to dealing with independent channels on a more intimate level and making something that's a little bit more nimble for texturizing in the 3D view without a whole lot of preparation and guesswork. But this is just the first step and I'm quite proud of this even though it is something that we put together just over the course of a month. Uh, full shout out to ST3 because he was the person behind all of it. But the idea started off as some sort of filtration system for loading images and actually discarding junk while being able to quickly set up these little node graphs. So right now it starts out fairly simple, but in the future I do imagine that its um, purpose will change and become a little bit more evolved and you'll be dealing with independent channels. But as of right now, you are currently only dealing with a single channel when it comes to one texture. Even in the uh, documentation of the uh, grunge for these textures, uh, Travis actually mentions that using different types of roughness uh, compared to normals can give some interesting results. So that's something that he even mentioned that I felt to neglect to get put into this version, but it is something that we will be pondering for the next one. But being able to shift click these and see the outputs in the 3D view is something that was added a little bit last minute, but I'm proud of the fact that it was able to be added because it is so essential. But I hope users end up trying out the promotion, picking up some maps, building up a prefabs folder of roughness maps that they can scroll through and just experiment with the system to see what sort of interesting results they're able to get using the basic principle shader and the blank material system within hard ops. Recently, I was so fortunate as to get to work on a recent hops ad. So in the process of doing it, I found myself needing some imperfection textures in order to spruce up the blank materials that were being used for the surfaces that you see here. This is a little bit of behind the scenes of just how the blends were going when it came to cutting these patterns. And then of course the camera will change over to an upper view showing the pieces fall down. But really as I looked at it over and over, 
and tweaked it repeatedly. I just felt that something else was needed in order to get this looking right. In fact, looking at this in retrospect, I remember actually hand animating all these pieces to go down and slide in, knowing that I was going to give them clicks later like you see in the intro. But even after setting all this up, I felt that something else was needed with this. So for that, that's where these imperfection maps came in. So if you look at the final result, which looks a little weird unless I zoom in, just kind of a weird bug with Eevee. If I zoom back, it looks all blown out, but if I zoom in, it's fine. You know, that's Blender for you. But, you know, if we go through and we look at this, it actually just has a little bit more character to it. I'm sure I could have used it even more efficiently now with the upcoming feature that I'll be discussing, but just wanted to show a little background of how these maps came into my life. And so as a result, I wanted to come up with some sort of system that would be able to utilize it. And it was uh, initially quite difficult to explain to ST3 internally as far as what I was wanting because he was like you want to do what I was like yeah I want a system that scrolls through these maps but I don't want it to show any garbage maps I don't want it to load any low resolution thumbnail images in here or try to go through any of the trash I want it to just bring up only the good stuff and so with that let's jump on to the next slide <laughs> 